Hello and welcome to Chalk Talk. I'm Melody Swang. In this edition of our news magazine, we'll share with you some of the exciting events taking place in our school system. We'll start with a look back at a couple of once-in-a-lifetime opportunities for some lucky students and a lucky school when Super Bowl 47 came to town. It was indeed a busy time in New Orleans as celebrities and athletes from around the country converged on the city. But these A-list entertainers were not the only big shots in town. Close to 1,000 students representing eight schools from St. Tammany Parish Public Schools were invited to this private event at the NFL Experience. These students were given the opportunity to attend based on completing the NFL Play 60 Super Bowl Challenge. The NFL Play 60 Challenge encourages students to get 60 minutes of exercise every day, and by doing so, these students earned a trip to the Super Bowl. NFL experience, that is. So all of these kids that are here today successfully completed the NFL Play 60 Challenge. It was a six-week program that we did in school with them, and their reward was to come to this private event today. So we opened NFL experience just for these kids. The schools were phenomenal. They all jumped in. The Phys ed teachers were ready to go. Everybody did participate. They had to fill out their journals, 60 minutes a day, and so forth. And every time when we did exercises, we would write it in our Play 60 book and write how many minutes we did for it. And we added up for the whole day, and then we got our total. Hard work that paid off in the form of a day out to the NFL Experience Pro Football's interactive theme park that offers games, displays, entertainment attractions, and kids' football clinics. I did the punt, pass, and kicking. I did the 40-yard run. That was also fun. We um, caught footballs in a pit. I threw footballs into a net. Amid all the activity, the students had the opportunity to interact with some of their favorite NFL players. Well, it's an opportunity for them to kind of hang out and, and play a couple games with, with professional football players and it's an opportunity that they don't get that often so for us to be able to come out and put a smile on their faces that's what it's all about. Encouragement from the pros and a reminder that the daily 60 minutes of exercise doesn't have to be just playing football. They learn how to have fun and play for at least 60 minutes a day. You don't have to play football all the time. You can go running, you can walk, you can dance, you can do anything, right? As long as you get out and you get active. It is important. I mean, it's, it's something that's a natural fit for us because our athletes just need to keep themselves healthy in order to play for a long career. So it was an easy transfer for us to pass that message along to kids and let them know that you can do whatever you want. Just play, play for 60 minutes every day, whether that's riding your bike, walking your dog, playing football, playing basketball, dancing with your friends. Just get out there and get active. Even with all this interaction, the students didn't forget about the Super Bowl. As it turns out, the Ravens won the Super Bowl, and these St. Tammany Parish students won an experience that they won't soon forget. It's been so fun that it's, been, it's just been a blast today. In October 2007, the NFL launched NFL Play 60, a national youth health and fitness campaign focused on increasing the wellness of young fans by encouraging them to be active for at least 60 minutes a day. Fifth Ward Junior High was one of the schools that took part in the NFL Play 60 Super Bowl Challenge. A concerted effort by the students resulted in the school being named the grand prize winner. As a result, the students were treated to the Play 60 Ultimate PE class that included a visit for some New Orleans Saints. Channel 13 stopped by to cover the action. You got your camera ready? You got your iPhone? With Super Bowl 47 being played in New Orleans, NFL Play 60 issued a challenge to schools nearby. This is a program that we opened up to every school within 90 miles uh, of New Orleans and there were many schools that applied. We had uh, more than 15,000 kids participate. From that huge group of participants, it was the 5th Ward Junior High students that really stepped up and ahead of everyone in this challenge. And what they would do is every day they would do their act, physical activity, whatever number of minutes it was, they would journal it, write it down, put it into the book, enter it. The NFL lady told me that she has never seen better documentation and better logs turned in by students than from this school, and that's one of the reasons they were picked. We ended up turning in all 162 books. Whatever we started with, we turned in 100% and finished it and did a great job with it. The NFL, Xbox, and the American Heart Association recommends 
that you play 60. But why 60? That's what the scientific organizations tell us is the most important, and that's the message that we want kids to hear, that it's really important, no matter how you get it, no matter what form of exercise, but that it's 60 minutes every day. Uh, today I talked to them a little bit about there's, there's 1,440 minutes in a day, and we just want 60. Jimmy Graham, Akeem Hicks, and Michael Lewis then participated in the Play 60 Ultimate PE class that was made up of the jump rope challenge, cone course, football relay race, toning training, Woo! Oh, he got and Xbox Connect units. It was very fun. I got to race Jimmy and <laughs> beat him. Whoop, whoop. Although the Play 60 Ultimate PE class was a success, there was another important message Jimmy Graham wanted to share with the students. If I wouldn't have been attentive in school, if I didn't stay in school and get my education, uh, then I wouldn't be able to keep up. A well-rounded education is the key to success, and the success here at Fifth Ward with the Play 60 Challenge had Principal Chris Ufnack overwhelmed with joy. It was awesome having the NFL come to Bush, Louisiana. Tiger Edwards. Channel 13. Fifth Ward was allowed to keep all the equipment used during the Play 60 Ultimate PE class. Covington High recently received approval to name their gym in honor of former head basketball coach Hubert Hubie Gallagher. And the Covington High community convened for the purpose of venerating the longtime coach at a special reception and dedication at the school. To have a gym named after you, you had to win a whole lot of ball games. It just doesn't happen. And Coach Gallagher won a whole lot of ball games. At the pre-dedication reception, speakers extolled the virtues of Coach Gallagher, making it clear that his legacy lives on. He said, Rich, you're going out football. I said, yes, sir. He said, boy, I sure wish you wouldn't. <laughs> That's a, these are true stories. When you hear these stories about how much he meant to so many people so many years ago, and still you see their children here and their grandchildren have come to recognize him today, I mean, it just shows so much about the person and the impact he had. It's been so long since he coached, 42 years since he coached the game, and uh, to us it was all the more impressive that there were this many people that wanted to get this done. Uh, so many years after his career. A career highlighted in this short video presented to the school board requesting the naming of the gym in Gallagher's behalf. For 37 years, Coach Hubert Uby Gallagher served as head basketball coach at Lyon High and Covington High, amassing a record of 626 wins and 291 losses. His teams won 10 district championships, five regional championships, and state championships in 1946 and 1960. During his tenure, Coach Gallagher ran one of the top basketball tournaments in the state. The Lion High Covington High Invitational was an early season showcase of talent in Louisiana. Besides working with the basketball players at Covington High, Coach Gallagher also found time to be the athletic director, head football coach, track coach and teach a variety of subjects. Upon retiring from coaching, Gallagher served as a supervisor in the central office. In 1983, Coach Gallagher was inducted into the Louisiana High School Athletic Association Hall of Fame. Coach Hubert UB Gallagher knew interscholastic athletics played an important role in the development of students at Lyon High and Covington High. His career sits as a model for all of those who have come after him. In the 100th year of Covington High, there is no better way to recognize this lion legend than to name the Covington High Gym in his honor. Following the reception, everyone adjourned to the basketball court where Principal Deborah McCollum read a proclamation and officially named the gymnasium in honor of Coach Hubert UB Gallagher will heretofore be named Hubert Hubie Gallagher Gymnasium. As part of the dedication ceremony, Coach Gallagher's family members 
were presented a silver tray commemorating the occasion and then spoke about the importance of this event. It is uh, an incredible honor. Uh, I know Coach Salta with the stadium, Coach Smith with the track, and my dad with the gym. Uh, I think Covington High is probably the only school in the state that has three straight coaches that are in the Co Louisiana Coaches Hall of Fame. So uh, it's, it's, it's a great honor. Tiger Edwards, Channel 13. Another Covington High School coach honored recently was Jack Salter, who was inducted into the Greater New Orleans Sports Hall of Fame. The Greater New Orleans Awards Selection Committee meets each year to select candidates for induction into the hall. Mr. Muley uh, put Jack Salter's name up for nomination, and, and then there was, and it's usually a very vigorous discussion uh, involving all the candidates. And uh, it's not easy to make the first cut. And to be selected, eventually, you have to be named on 75% of, uh, of the ballots. So it's, it, it's not an easy process. Even with a tough selection process, it was easy for sports writer Marty Mule to nominate Coach Salter. I was always impressed with Coach Salter's teams. He was, uh, I, I thought his teams were always disciplined, played well. It dawned on me, I, I realized he, he had been to four state championship games. There aren't a lot of coaches around here that, that have had their team in that kind of contention for long. Winning on the field, amassing 259 wins over a 33-year career with four state finalists and one state championship is noteworthy. Yet there are other considerations as well. well I've always said if you walk into the uh, into the locker room at Covington High, you see how much he's meant. They have those pictures of all those kids who got scholarships, uh, not only under him, but mostly under him. I mean, there, there's gotta be close to 100 pictures of, of uh, Covington kids who, who got higher education because they played football under Coach Salter. Jack Salter you know, dedicated his life uh, to the young men of St. Tammany Parish and, and did it in, in more ways than just being a successful coach. Success that was a direct result of Salter's love for his players. The kind of person he was with his players, you know, I, I think he, I think this, uh, that uh, every one of them was an extension of his family and he treated them as he treated his family. And they were part of his family. The way that Coach Jack Salter conducted himself with his students and players cast an iconic shadow in the community in which he lived. I ask them who's the number one person in Covington there that, that kept us in uh, that city on the map, and they would say it was Jack Salter. Putting the city of Covington on the map was a side effect of the hard work and commitment this man made to the student athletes of Covington High. I have always believed that the most critical time in a young man's life is the years when they start to become a man. That was the young man that I wanted to coach. I wanted to be a high school coach. I wanted to teach them the physical and technical game of football. I wanted to guide them through their tough teen years. And I knew that preparing them for the game of football would also prepare them for the game of life. Each day I told my players that hard work would would breed success and that if they committed to the dream, they would achieve it. A noble career that was recognized with his induction into the Greater New Orleans Sports Hall of Fame. Here go, man. Good job. I know you, Coach. Hey, I needed that guy. I needed that. Tiger Edwards, Channel 13. Let's now head over to Lakeshore High, where the Pro Start Culinary class hosted three guests from France who were in America learning about culinary and hospitality programs. The delegation included the Minister of Foreign Affairs and two vocational high school teachers. I found that the only way I could do this is to coach mine. Rustic French cooking is long thought to be the best in the world. So why would a French delegation visit the Pro Start class at Lakeshore High? 
Today's visit was to focus on sharing with our visitors from France uh, information about our career and technical education programs, specifically those in the culinary arts, uh, giving them an opportunity to see how we build knowledge and skills with our students. I oversee uh, over 40 programs in Louisiana that have our ProStart program, which is high school food service management. And they asked if, if I had some uh, top programs that they could come and visit. And Lakeshore High School is one of those. We are bringing a team from uh, this kind of uh, professional uh, teaching in, in France to tour your uh, career and technical schools, to meet with the, the professional of this area, and to see what we have in common. During the tour, there was a chance for the visitors to talk with the students about the program and their future plans. I told them all that I'm really interested in moving into the food industry and maybe one day owning my own business, and that I wanted to gain all of the knowledge that came in this program, both in the business and management aspect and in the culinary arts aspects as well. This resonated with their French guests. What I saw was that the students were passionate, they really like what they're doing, uh, cooking is part of their lives and they want to make a career with cooking, so that's very nice to see that. Avid students involved in the successful Lakeshore Pro Start program that's building a legacy. Many of the kids still work in the restaurants where they were working um, when they were in high school. Several though have gone on. Um, we have one student who received scholarships to Nichols and is working to become a pastry chef. I had another who was actually um, admitted to CIA, Culinary Institute of America in New York, and he will be starting in about a year. With the success of this local program, the French delegation is excited about continuing the exchange of ideas within this vocational program. So we are dreaming about uh, the possibility to exchange students, maybe to exchange teachers, and to build uh, new competencies, new curriculum for French students and Louisiana students to be able to have new competence to, to, and to showcase uh, their, their knowledge uh, uh, for the public. Tiger Edwards, Channel 13. The French delegation visited seven different school districts in four days to gather information to bring back to vocational and technical school teachers in France. Dr. Randy Webb of Northwestern State University in Natchitoches, Louisiana also visited Lakeshore High School to speak with members of the senior class about his university. This visit provided the students with a unique opportunity to speak to a university president. It was clear that Dr. Webb was there to share the news about his university. Our mission says we're a responsive, student-oriented university. That says that's what we're there for. We're all about changing the lives of students for the better. A good reason to consider his school and an extraordinary chance to meet the person entrusted with carrying out that mission statement. Dr. Webb is one of the few university presidents that I've ever had the privilege to meet that truly enjoys interfacing with our young adults. It's very important to him that he maintain that personal touch even from the level of his office. I've never had a university president show up at a school that I've worked at that actually wanted to meet with the students and spend time with them to tell them about the university and the programs that they have. It's, it's such a unique experience. A one-of-a-kind visit that had Dr. Webb extolling the virtues of his office. Audience. I know about the quality of education in St. Tammany Parish. I also know something that these students may not know, that Southeast Louisiana students who come to Northwestern generally end up in leadership positions at Northwestern because they've got outstanding educational backgrounds. High praise for our students and easy to see why these types of visits are a priority with the school system. Our school system as a whole and particularly our staff in the central office and school board have recognized the importance in expanding our young adults choices after high school. Keeping with our motto of learning to last a lifetime. Tiger Edwards, Channel 13. In May 2012, our eight public high schools graduated 2,095 seniors who were offered over $56 million in scholarships. 
Several state legislators also stopped by some of the schools in St. Tammany Parish recently to visit the school cafeterias to learn more about the integral role the district's food service programs play in the health and education of the students. The legislators toured the cafeterias and were introduced to the cafeteria staff. The visit highlighted the important role that the food service program plays in maintaining healthy nutrition for the students. Well, I think it's extremely important because your nutrition is basically what feeds the brain for you to be able to study and to learn and to carry out through the day. So to see the good balanced meals that are shown here, uh, available here, I think it's uh, something that uh, we should all be proud of. Some legislators even donned chef's hats and aprons and served the students lunch. I think it's important for, for, for myself as a state legislator to, to have some good idea what's going on, on on a campus from day in, day out, especially from a nutritional standpoint. They loved it. They weren't exactly sure in some cases who their special guest was, but they liked having a fellow with a chef's hat and a special apron serve them, so it was a lot of fun for everybody. The district's food service program serves over 36,000 meals each day. Several community members also visited students at Lake Harbor Middle School recently during the school's career day. Students learned about numerous occupations and the educational requirements of various professions. Assistant Superintendent Cheryl Airby was there to share with the students not only the education needed to teach, but she also shared with the students how her love of reading helped her throughout her career. The students took notes, asked questions, and came away with a wide range of ideas. The event was part of a state legislated career options initiative. Career day speakers included an engineer, a cartoonist and artist, a federal agent, a veterinarian, a box maker, a representative from the Saints organization, and Maneville Mayor Don Villery. A two-day Schlechty Center Regional Seminar was hosted by St. Tammany Parish Public Schools at the Treen Technology Center. The conference offered opportunities for teachers and administrators to collaborate and explore new learning and insights. It just kind of rem reminds you of what you're all here for and what we're all here for. Superintendent Trey Fulce kicked off the workshop with a warm welcome to the participants as he shared with them the importance of community support for the success of the school district. Throughout the two-day conference, participants learned about the engagement-centered classroom experience, the characteristics of teachers as leaders, and the concept of engagement and how it relates to profound learning. A lot of times you can learn a lot from your classmates as well with class discussions. Just to switch it up a little bit so then we're not extremely bored with the topic. Even the conference a included topic, a panel discussion with five down. students from the St. Tammany Parish Public Schools. Students shared their thoughts on what engages them the most in the classroom. Gaining feedback from students can be extremely beneficial for teachers. We think student voice, listening to student voice, and asking students about what things engage them and what things don't um, is, is very helpful. Along with student voices, there were also reflections from a group of teachers and principals. We need to be doing things to keep them engaged to make sure that they are excited and they want to be here every day. Nolte also shared the importance of the crucial capacity. roles that not only teachers and principals play in building a successful school system, but also the central office staff. When we talk about teachers' roles, we talk about teachers as designers, leaders of kids in doing quality work, and guides to instruction. Principals we see as leaders of those leaders. And for the central office, that role is about building capacity for the district to support work at the building level and across the buildings. If we continue to keep that focus on student engagement. Assistant Superintendent Cheryl Airby was also on hand to discuss the importance of not only student engagement, but teacher engagement as well. You have to have engaged leaders in order to have engaged teachers. And you have to have engaged teachers in order to have engaged students. But when you've got that, that's where you get achievement going up. This highly engaging two-day conference gave participants much to think about and reflect on, as well as giving them practical ways to go back and use the ideas in their classrooms. You know, we always think we're working on the kids, or we're working on lessons, but it's the work we're working on and how to make that engaging, how to make that every work sample they do, everything we teach them theirs and make it meaningful and have them work with each other on the work and have their input and meet their needs. It's everything we should be doing as teachers 
but it gives you a much more concrete way to understand how to do it. The school district has worked with the Schlechte Center since 2005. We'd now like to congratulate Carolyn Park Middle School Principal Tony Esposito, who received the Patriot Award from the employer support of the Guard and Reserve Organization in recognition of his support of his employees serving with the Guard. Kim Alexis, teacher and member of the National Guard, nominated him for his support during her numerous military missions. He supports my unit, the mission, myself, my family, the school, the community. So he's, he's a true patriot in more than one way. Principal Esposito was given the plaque during lunchtime, much to his surprise and to the delight of the sixth grade students. She's doing something that she has to do for the country, and therefore I need to support her in everything I can do. I was on, deeply honored and very much surprised. Board member Bob Womack also expressed his delight at Esposito receiving the honor. Whether it's guard service or just supporting one of his teachers individually, he is pro-teacher, he's pro-student, he's pro-St. Tammany Parish. Employer support for the military reservist plays an important role in terms of the overall military mission, and this award is an opportunity for the military personnel to recognize their employees. The school district kicked off a new early childhood literacy program recently at the Parenting Center in Slidell. This project called Reach Out and Read is a part of the Striving Readers Literacy Grant Program, which funds programs to promote literacy from birth to 12th grade. School officials in Slidell Memorial Hospital teamed up to place children's books and volunteer readers in the waiting rooms of pediatricians' offices in order to promote reading while their children wait to see their doctor. Beth Lane, who is supervising the program for the district, stressed the importance of introducing books at a young age. When kids are very young and they have books in their hands and they're read aloud to in these early years, this increases the probability of both a healthy child and a successful child. Superintendent Trey Fulce welcomed the new project, seeing it as an important role for the school district. This Reach Out and Read program brings together so many different groups. Um, our theme as a school system this year is community connections, and I really can't think of a better way to make that connection, starting with all the different agencies that are represented here today. Taffy Morrison, the hospital's community outreach manager, also shared her excitement about the project. We are really glad to partner with the school system to be able to help them in any way we can to help our families, because that's our mission also here at the Parenting Center, is to grow families, not only emotionally, socially, but also academically. Bill Davis, chief executive officer with Slidell Memorial Hospital, stressed the importance of literacy skills not only for young children but for adults as well. From a literacy perspective, you're not able to read the instructions, understand the instructions that you're given, you will have a poor health outcome. Dr. Stevenson, a local pediatrician, is the first physician in the area to participate in the project. My staff and I are very excited to be participating in this program. The nurse practitioners and I have all been through a training program that Reach Out and Read has designed to help us learn the best ways to give each age group um, some pointers on how to encourage reading. It's important for children to be exposed to books at an early age. Studies show when children are read aloud to in their early years, it increases the probability of becoming effective readers. Even placing books in the hands of young children can create a love for books, which can impact early reading skills. You get one at six months, 12 months, 18 months, two years, three years, four years, and five years. And each time we talk to the parents about what language and speech skills are expected at that age and encourage them to uh, help the kids develop. I rough you in the evening when the moon lights up the night. A highlight for the young children in attendance was Superintendent Fulce reading to them. I rough your little fingers in your teeny tiny toes. Much to the children and the mother's delight, children were also given their very own books to take home. Further supporting the belief that introducing books to these young ones at an early age is vitally important for their future success. Bottom line, every child in this world will have books in their hand. Parents will know how to talk to their children about books, which develops a huge bond as well as increases vocabulary and language skills, and they'll enter kindergarten healthy, happy, and ready to learn. For more information about Reach Out and Read, you can go to their website at reachoutandread.org.
We'd also like to congratulate some aspiring student videographers whose work won top honors in the annual student video contest sponsored by LeQ, the Louisiana Association for Computer Using Educators. Channel 13 interns Brendan Toomey, Amy Borax, and Jared Wise produced a story on Bulldog Buddies at Fountain Blue High School, an organization that fosters relationships between special education students and regular education students. Pearl River High students also won first place for their video entitled Art by the Numbers, which tells the story of a student artist, Austin Pullman, who is inspired by mathematics to create intricate origami sculptors and ocarina music. The production team consisted of Ashton Bourne, Jessica Talamo, John Mitchell, and Casey Johnson. The students were presented with a certificate of recognition by Assistant Superintendent Cheryl Araby at the January school board meeting. The Channel 13 interns recently produced a trio of great videos we now want to share with you. We'll begin with Lakeshore High student Brendan Toomey's video about small businesses. In it, he explains the importance of entrepreneurship in the community. Next, you'll see a video produced by Amy Borax, Fountain Blue High student, highlighting the award-winning Fountain Blue High culinary arts teacher, Angela Drago. And finally, you'll see a video produced by Jared Wise, also a Fountain Blue High student, who takes us to a day in the life of a sports casting team. Most of the country is employed by small businesses. Now, the, you know, their definition of a small business might be different than mine. You know, we have 12 people that work for us on a regular basis, but that's 12 people that would be maybe unemployed, maybe not as happy. I think small businesses add a lot to the community because small business people give back so much to the community. They get involved with uh, the schools, the SPCA, you name it. I can't help but think that small business is truly at the heart of, uh, of not just, the, uh, this, just this area, but the country as a whole. I've found that at the very heart um, of any business transaction is relationship. So um, I really believe the benefits of small business offers us just that, an opportunity to, uh, to really get to know um, our customers' needs. What customers don't know are the challenges faced with operating a business. I think the big challenge is how do you get customers to know you're here? How do you get customers to come into your shop um, uh, and, not, and not go to the, to the national chains? I think the biggest challenge you face is to understand that there's only so much you can do. Uh, I think a lot of people, myself included, wind up micromanaging their business and you can't let it operate, you can't let it flow. One of the biggest benefits of owning my own business is the people. It's the customers. They're wonderful. I mean, uh, this is a happy business, so almost every person that comes through the door is happy. And keeping customers happy is a top concern for all small business owners trying to build long-lasting relationships with their clientele. The importance of relationships just are immeasurable. Uh, as I mentioned, all business, I believe, at the very heart is built, built on relationships. Um, and that word could also be cross-referenced with the word trust. I think it's so, so important. I try to learn my customers' names. I try to have a personal relationship with them. I think you, when you do business, you do business with relationships and you understand what they are, what they mean to you, and you understand how important they are. As an entrepreneur, you're very, very interested in creating something that that talks about you, talks about who you are, how you do things. For over two centuries, the entrepreneur has forged both the economy and the country itself. I do think small businesses are the backbone of the American economy. It goes back to the passion of the business and the, the, American, the, the American dream of owning it, owning it, just owning it outright and not depending on anybody else. Groundhog Landscape Management. Barbara speaking, may I help you? I, I think we don't have to go back too far um, to remember that uh, uh, this country was pretty much built on the backs of the small businessmen, and I really believe it still is. From the backs of the small businessmen to the skyscrapers of New York, the entrepreneur will continue to remain a vital part of not only this country's past, but its future as well. Brendan Toomey, Channel 13. From the kitchen at Fountain Blue High School comes a class adored by many. 
The Pro Start class is a hands-on cooking experience taught by an award-winning teacher, Angie Jago. The purpose of the program is to prepare students for careers in food service, culinary arts, and all areas of hospitality. It's developed for juniors and seniors and they receive classroom instruction as well as kitchen lab instruction. It gives the kids a, a, a course that they can hands on, all right? Uh, instead of sitting behind a desk and listening to a lecture or a PowerPoint, they are actually doing something in there and they're creating and they're learning how to, how to cook foods, how to serve foods, how to uh, prepare themselves for independence on their own and as for opportunities out, out there in the real world. Ms. Drago is an awesome teacher and it's really been like life changing how much I've learned in like two years about food. And you already put your shrimp in? Yes ma'am. Cool. In addition to being a respected teacher, Ms. Drago is also being noticed in the community. From winning Educator of the Year for Fountain Blue High twice and from winning Pro Star Educator of the Year for the state. She's also received the Golden Crow and James Maynard Award for her accomplishments with Pro Start. I'm proud and humbled to be Fountain Blue High's Teacher of the Year. Um, and then this past year, I was also awarded the Louisiana State Pro Start Educator of the, of the Year. And um, in winning that award, I was qualified for a national award. And I was honored and humbled to receive the national title up in Chicago, which was the Golden Corral James Maynard Award. I think she truly deserved it. Um, she definitely goes like out of her comfort zone to, make, to actually make sure that you know what you're doing. First of all, she's an excellent teacher, okay? And she's a, a, a great person, all right? But then she has the skills and the training, again, to prepare them for when they, uh, they go out into the, uh, on the real world uh, market up, uh, job opportunity. You know, she brings in uh, guest chefs and restaurant people, and she knows what they're looking for, so the kids get that expertise from her to prepare them. Not only does Ms. Drago help the students with cooking, but also guides those who want to pursue a career in food and hospitality. I plan on becoming either a pastry chef or becoming an, an executive sous chef. And she's given me the opportunity to meet different chefs and, and people who work in restaurants and given me the opportunity to do banquets and all, all kind of stuff that allowed me to get jobs. I wish I had about a hundred of her, okay, because she does, does so many things and she's so interested in preparing the kids for college and careers. And of course, the opportunities that she gives to the students to learn. I just love it. I love cooking. It's real. You know, we're always trying to provide authentic learning experiences for our students. And I, I guess I have, a little bit, I have it a little bit easier in that department because I don't have to convince my students why this is important or how this is relevant to real life. We're all lifelong eaters. We've, that's one of the few things we all have in common. We've all been doing it our whole lives, so I, I, I like that part. Amy Borax, Channel 13. In any sport, a great deal of preparation is necessary. It's not only the players prepping, but the sportscasters on the sidelines as well. Preparation is the whole key. Hello, Coach Carlin. Yeah, Tiger Edwards. When you get to a gym or you get to a football field and you have everything together, you're a lot more confident about what's going to take place. It's District 74A, Andrew Franzella, Charles Tiger Edwards to bring you the action. Even if you're prepared, there are going to be challenges. Probably a, a blessing and a curse, um, the idea of it being so fresh and new every time. But the curse is that uh, you never really know what quite is going to happen. Um, so you really have to be ready, you have to be engaged 100% of the time when you're on camera and things are live technically. After all the preparation and planning, it's now game time for both the players and the sportscasters. Caitlin Mumphrey bringing it up right side. If you have to do a game by yourself, you really have to concentrate. It becomes more about trying to identify everybody that's out on the field and identify them as much as you can to keep and, and then to interject so you're doing both color and you're announcing and then interject some information to the audience about what's taking place on the field. But when he's not by himself, Tiger works with co-sportscaster Andrew Franzella, who after three years has developed an unmistakable chemistry between Tiger and himself. So it takes time when you're with somebody. It takes time to get to know 
them and their style and bring them in. But I think what he brings to the table was a lot of experience and where I'm younger and maybe a little more naive uh, as to, to what goes on, he sort of lends a helping hand there and I just try to bring the energy. And so we really have just grown to work with each other very well, I think, um, and really flow no matter what the situation is. This friendship is the glue that bonds these sportscasters together, which may have to do with why they both love sportscasting so much. Sports, there's something about it where you can't call really what's going to happen before the game. And so when you go in there, it's the off the cuff, on the fly um, sort of job that is just makes every game exciting. One of the things I love about it, obviously, is the competition. But I love the interaction, first off, with the coaches and with the players and then seeing them out on the floor competing against one another and um, and what happens when there's a somebody wins right at the end or or somebody loses and their reaction to it and um, and the excitement that comes from all of that at the buzzer there's not only a winning team on the court but a winning team in the sports casting booth as well jared was channel 13. These three video producers are all part of our high school internship program. They not only are earning high school credit, but are also earning college credit for their work with us here at Channel 13. And remember, you can watch all of our shows in all kinds of ways. We're on Charter Channel 13 on the North Shore, AT&T UVerse Channel 99, both North and South Shore, and also live streaming from our webpage. To find our broadcast schedule, just go to stpsb.org and follow the link to Channel 13. From our website, you can also watch our shows on our Video On Demand page, where you can view our shows or download a show for future viewing into iTunes. We're also on YouTube. Just search Channel 13 St. Tammany Schools. Thanks for watching this edition of Chalk Talk. We close our show today with a photo montage of Alton Elementary students participating in their multicultural parade.